Hello and welcome to a basic Java tutorial. In this episode we are going to build your first Java class and your first Java program. I'm going to start by going to the Sun Java website in order to download the Java development kit. This is what is necessary to build Java code and execute that code after you build it. So I'm going to go to java.sun.com website in order to download this development kit. Once you pull up this website, it will have popular downloads on the right-hand side. If you'll go to Java SE, which stands for Standard Edition. Java has different editions made for different types of development, but we'll use the Standard Edition in this case. You see at the top, at the recording of this tutorial, JDK 6 Update 5 was the most recent. If you'll click on Download, and then on this page you will have to accept a license agreement and go through and select the version that you require for your platform. They have Windows, Linux, Solaris, and Windows 64 as well as the other 64-bit operating systems. You select the one that you that fits your platform and download it and install it. It is pretty straightforward. I won't show you the download on this episode, but once you do that, you'll have two components that are necessary for this exercise. One is the Java C executable, which is the Java compiler. That is what we use to compile our text Java code once we write it. And then there's the Java interpreter, java.exe, that actually will run a program. And that is what we'll run after we compile a class. So in this exercise, we'll write a basic Java class, and public class, my first class. With every class, you surround it with these curly braces. I find it a good technique to enter the matching ending brace as soon as you enter the first one so that you don't forget it. It's a good practice to keep in mind. In this case, public is what we call an access modifier in Java, and that is to indicate that any other class in this uh, Java environment can use this one. And it is a class, and, and this is our name. Java has a naming convention for classes. It's not a requirement, but it is a guideline to have the first character of every word capitalized. So the M, F, and C in this case are all capitalized. We're going to create one method on this class in Java. It is a standard method that is um, looked for by the interpreter on every Java class so that you can run it on the command line. You can execute Java code in several ways. We are going to do it by the command line in this exercise, but as you may know in the world of the internet, there are other ways to execute Java code from a web browser and from different uh, other internet components. Um, I just wrote out a method and also put the uh, curly braces there. Again, they, they need to be matching as well for this method. This is a standard, what we call signature in Java. Um, again, public is an access modifier that indicates that any other class can access this method. Static is an access modifier that says you don't have to have an instance of this class, which would be an object. That is an object-oriented principle that we will get to in a later session. Static indicates that you don't need to have an instance to run this method. Void is what we call a return type for this method. So when you actually run a main method, it expects you expect to get back nothing. So void indicates that there is no expectation for a return. Inside the parentheses is the argument list. Now, in this case, um, it, string is the type, and you see args is the name here. And it has these two brackets. The brackets indicate that this is an array. This is a very fixed and standard signature of the main method. In this case, it has uh, an array, and there is no size associated with it. The size would be driven by however many arguments you typed in on the command line when you actually run this program. So if you type in nothing, then the array will have zero elements inside. We are going to go ahead and test that by using an if condition in Java, and you surround a condition by parentheses. We're going to say if args length is greater than zero. This means that we are looking to see if any arguments were passed in on the command line. When I use this dot notation, that is doing something 
on top of args. So we're asking something about args. In an array such as this, you, in Java, you can use the length attribute to find out how many elements are in that array. In this case, we'll ask if it is greater than zero. So any number, if you entered one or more, this condition will be met. And therefore, this code will enter inside these two curly braces and do whatever we tell it to. So I am going to use this system construct to print something out to the command line. And I'm using this uh, notation to print out the first element in the array. So if we know we entered more than one, we'll go ahead and print out the first one. Um, I use this system construct. The dot, again, tells me I'm doing something with the system. Out indicates that we want to print this out to the command line. And then print line is a method on that that tells us to print whatever is in the parentheses here and also a new line character. So it'll actually go to the next line once we do that. So I entered U typed in quotes here. And then this plus sign says, put something else on there and add something else to this line. I'm using this variable, part of that array that we just indicated, except this time I'm actually putting an index in there. Zero says, give me the first element in this array, the first position. It is zero based and not one based in Java. So that is important to remember. Every executable line in Java ends in a semicolon. It's the dot with the little comma underneath it. That is very important to remember as well. If we don't have an argument, then we will enter something else here to show you how conditions work. You see this else is also surrounded by, print, uh, by curly braces. And we will enter no arguments passed, also semicolon. Now that we're ready to compile this, we will go and save it. In Java, you must name the file the same thing you named the class. So in this case, my first class .java is the required name of the file that I save. If you enter something else, you will get an error when you try to compile this. I'm going to go ahead and enter a uh, bring up a command prompt here to use the compiler and switch to my directory here, Java work, where I saved it. You can see that I have my Java file there. I'm going to use that Java C dot, uh, exe file that I talked about, and I pass in just the name of that Java class that I just typed out. Once I enter that, it comes back with no response, which means it was successful. I'm going to list that directory. I see that I have the Java file, and I have a .class file. That is the one that it just produced. So now that I have that class, which is in Java called bytecode, I can execute that by entering java.exe, my first class. I don't have to use the .class extension because it is looking for a class in my current directory. So I will be able to enter that, hit enter, and it says no arguments passed. If I were to type my first class and pass something in, then it would print out the other conditional part of my code. You typed argument. So you see how the condition worked, how it looked at the arguments, and how it dealt with that array. And congratulations, you have written your first Java program. Thank you very much.